Hey everyone, so in this video I'll share my PhD interview experience at IIT Madras with technical part and I have made a separate video on the introduction part so you can check out that video, link is in the description box. Also I have made a video on my PhD interview experience at IIT Bombay and in that video I have shared so many things regarding PhD interview and I'll not discuss those things in this video. So please check out that video, you will definitely get some idea about the interface of the interview, link is in the description box. So my interview is online through Google Meet and before your interview they'll let you know about the time of your interview and every single detail via email also they'll provide helpline number or email id so in case of any query you can reach out them through these contact details and if your interview is online then one day before your interview they'll share link of the google meet with password and all details they'll also give you a call just before your interview and if you have any query regarding google meet or anything then you can ask them i had selected an organic chemistry panel so in the next part of the video you will find all the organic chemistry questions asked in the interview and uh, at the end of the video i'll share something about my interview and uh, if your interview is online then there are chances that you might face the same so watch this video till the end. Now let's start with the technical part of the interview. So in the interview there were total 4 professors from the organic chemistry panel and they asked me for the introduction with my education background. After the introduction part one of the professors started with the technical part. He asked me that what topics you have prepared. So I said I have prepared NMR spectroscopy, reagents and reaction mechanism. Then he started with the NMR spectroscopy. He told me to draw the structure of cyclohexane. Now here some misunderstanding was happened. I'll discuss that thing at the end of the video with some tips. So stay tuned. So he asked me that when you observe the NMR spectra of this compound then at low temperature you find two signals but when you increase the temperature then only one signal is observed why this thing is happening and uh, explain everything in detail i answered that uh, cyclohexane is exist in chair form and it carry two types of protons one is at axial position and the other one is at equatorial position now with this chair form the cyclohexane continuously ring flipping is taking place ring flipping means the proton present at axial position changes to equatorial position and vice versa and then it establishes an equilibrium now this ring flipping of cyclohexane is too faster so when we observe its enemy spectra at high temperature or room temperature then instrument is unable to detect these two different types of protons due to continuously ring flipping and equilibrium so it detects only one type of proton in the whole ring and uh, therefore only one signal is observed at high temperature but when we lower the temperature then this ring flipping process becomes slower so when we take its nmr spectra then instrument is able to detect these two different types of protons this is also called as a dynamic nmr spectroscopy and in the nmr spectra two different types of signals are observed then he asked that what is the type of these two different protons so basically he was asked asking about the enantiotopic or diastereotopic protons. I replied that uh, these two protons are giving two different signals, so they must be diastereotopic protons because enantiotopic protons don't give two different signals in the NMR spectroscopy. He said okay correct. Then second professor started with the other question. He asked me that uh, draw the structure of phenol and benzoic acid. Then he asked that uh, how can you separate these two compounds. So this was so basic question because we had performed this experiment in our bachelors during the separation of acid, phenol, base and neutral compounds. So I said with the help of sodium bicarbonate, he said how? explain everything in detail and uh, what type of compound is formed after the end of the reaction. So I answered that uh, so sodium bicarbonate is base and uh, benzoic acid is stronger acid than the phenol. Now base generally likes to react with a stronger acid and uh, only benzoic acid will react with sodium bicarbonate with the effervescence of CO2 gas and uh, at the end of the reaction a sodium benzoate is formed which is highly water soluble. So it gets dissolved in the solution and phenol will remain in the solid form. After that by simple filtration these two compounds get separated then you will find dissolved benzoic acid in the filtrate and on the filter paper phenol. Then he said okay correct but on what basis you are saying that uh, benzoic acid is stronger acid than the phenol. I said so on the basis of its pKa values. pKa values are related to acidity of any compounds. So if any compound has small pKa value then that compound is said to be more acidic. Now it is experimentally proven that benzoic acid and phenol has pKa value around 4.2 and 10 respectively. So benzoic acid has pKa value much lower than the phenol. So it is highly acidic and uh, that's why it reacts with sodium bicarbonate. Then third professor started asking me question. He said draw the structure of 4 bromo acetophenone. Then he asked that uh, tell me about its proton NMR spectra like how many different types of protons are present and uh, tell me about its total number of signal in the proton NMR spectroscopy. I answered that uh, this compound is carry plane of symmetry. So there is total 3 types of proton present in the compound and the same number of signal will appear in the NMR spectra. First type of protons is the one from acetyl group. Second type of proton is at ortho position to the acetyl group and third one is at meta position to the acetyl group. Then he asked me about the chemical shift values. Now you can't tell exact about the chemical shift 
battery values but I was aware of its range. Now generally acetyl proton ranges from 2 to 2.6. So I said for the protons A it will be somewhere around 2.4 to 2.5 and proton B and C are benzene ring protons. Now for benzene ring protons chemical shift value is around 7.25 but it varies as per the substituent attached to the ring. So here on benzene ring both the substituents are electron withdrawing group which makes this proton highly deshielded by withdrawing its electron density. So its chemical shift value must be greater than 7.25. Now acetyl group shows minus M effect so it is stronger electron withdrawing group than the bromide and the proton present at ortho position to acetyl is most deshielded. So its chemical shift value must be around 8 to 8.25 and for meta proton it must be less than 8 or equal to 8. Then he asked me that can you identify the presence of bromine group separately. I said yes sir with the help of mass spectrometry we can identify the presence of bromine. Then he said how? So I replied that sir bromine has two isotopes 79 bromine and 81 bromine and both of these isotopes have approximately equal mass abundance. So when we record the mass spectra of this compound then it gives two peaks of intensity of 1 rest 1 which is shows the presence of these two isotopes and this thing is only shown by the bromine. So with the help of this isotopic peaks in the mass spectra we can identify the presence of bromine group. Then fourth professor gave me this reaction. He asked me that show me its mechanism and tell me what would be the final measure product. So just looking at the reagent and the given conditions I got idea that it passes through the benzene mechanism. So first step is abstraction of this acidic proton by sodium amide base and uh, then leaving of the bromide group as a leaving group and the formation of benzene which is an intermediate. Then sodium amide is acted as a nucleophile and formation of these two products in which product A is major and B is minor. Then he asked that uh, how can you say that product A is major? I answered that so in the benzene mechanism we generally don't consider mesomeric effect only inductive effect is considered. So OCH3 group is only shows minus I effect and because of that effect a negative charge is stabilized at ortho carbon of the OCH3 group and a positive charge at meta carbon of the OCH3 group. So NH2 group is attack at meta carbon and uh, that's why product A is major product. Then he said that is correct but why do mesomeric effect is not considered in the benzene mechanism. I tried to explain them these things through the angle strain and all the things but I wasn't sure about the exact answer. So answer is simple. This triple bond is created due to the overlapping of these two sp2 hybridized carbons. Now two hybrid orbitals of this triple bond are directed slightly away from the ring. Also extent of overlapping is very poor and that is why resonance is not possible. So only inductive effect is considered in the benzene. And that's how my interview was ended. So when my interview started, the first professor told me to draw the structure of cyclohexane. Now there were some misunderstanding in the question, I didn't mention it in the earlier part of the video. So he told me to draw the structure of cyclohexane and uh, it was sounding like cyclohexanone or cyclohexanol. So I drawn the structure of cyclohexanone, which was a different structure than he told me. Now it was an online interview, so they can't see what I have written on my rough sheet. So when I started solving the question, I got confused and I wasn't getting any idea about the answer because I had drawn the different structure. Then after some time, he said, let me see what you have solved. So I brought the rough sheet in front of the camera. Then he said you misheard it. I said cyclohexane not cyclohexanone. Then I explained everything in detail. So main point of telling this thing is that my initial 5 to 10 minutes were passed in this misunderstanding. Now when you start your interview with confidence and initially this type of things happened then it might affect your confidence. And sometimes we started doubting ourselves like I can't solve this question and all. So that is why I'm saying if this type of things will happen with you especially if your interview is online then that is completely fine. Don't lose your confidence and try to be calm. And in case of any doubts ask them twice. So after these things they were laughing and uh, one of the professors was like uh, with this structure how can you reach the correct answer and uh, I was laughing too because it was just a misunderstanding. After that I was asking them twice and uh, confirming all these structures before solving the any questions. So yeah that's all for my interview at IIT Madras and I hope this video is somehow helpful for you and uh, please don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thank you.